What is the ozone layer? The ozone layer is a deep layer in stratosphere covering the Earth. The ozone layer acts as a protective shield over the Earth from harmful ultraviolet rays. Have you ever wondered why we wear sunglasses every summer? The answer is ultraviolet rays. Ultraviolet or UV rays are harmful sun rays that increase the risk of skin cancer and can be harmful to the ecosystem. Life on Earth is protected from the UV rays by the ozone layer. The ozone layer is made up of high concentrations 3 oxygen atoms, ozone. This layer is 3 to 5 millimeters thick and is at an altitude of 20,000 meters. The ozone layer was discovered in 1913 by the French physicist Charles Fabry and Henri Buisson. Formation of ozone molecules The ozone layer absorbs 97 to 99 percent of the sun's medium frequency ultraviolet light, from about 200 nanometers to 315 nanometers wavelength, which otherwise would potentially damage exposed life forms near the surface. Ultraviolet rays can be divided into two ultraviolet rays. UVA. UVA is on a wavelength of 315 to 400 nanometers. UVA light, the radiation used at tanning beds, is harmless because it doesn't cause burns. However, scientists now know that UVA light is even more harmful than UVB penetrating more deeply and causing a deadly skin cancer, melanoma, and premature aging. UVB UVB is on a wavelengths of 280 to 315 nanometers. UVB is the cause of skin conditions like sunburns, and cancers like basal cell carcinoma and squamous cell carcinoma. They is also UVC, 100 minus 280 nanometers, which is very harmful to all living things, is entirely screened out by a combination of dioxygen, 200 nanometers, and ozone. About 200 nanometers, by around 35 kilometers, 115,000 feet, altitude. Our ozone layer is deteriorating. The ozone layer is depleted by free radical catalysts, including nitric oxide, NO, nitrous oxide, N2O, hydroxyl, O, atomic chlorine, 
Cl, and atomic bromine, Br. While there are natural sources for all of these species, the concentrations of chlorine and bromine increased markedly in recent decades because of the release of large quantities of man-made organohalogen compounds, especially chlorofluorocarbons, CFCs, and bromofluorocarbons. Sources of nitrogen oxide, NO2, are from aircraft exhaust. Sources of chlorofluorocarbons, CFCs, and bromofluorocarbons. Once in the atmosphere, CFCs drift slowly upward to the stratosphere, where they are broken up by ultraviolet radiation, releasing the chlorine that catalytically destroys ozone. In the graphic below, the destructive cycle of a chlorine atom is shown. UV radiation breaks off a chlorine atom from a CFC molecule. The chlorine atom attacks an ozone molecule, O3, breaking it apart and destroying the ozone. The result is an ordinary oxygen molecule. O2, and a chlorine monoxide molecule, CLO. The chlorine monoxide molecule, CLO, is attacked by a free oxygen atom releasing the chlorine atom and forming an ordinary oxygen molecule, O2. The chlorine atom is now free to attack and destroy another ozone molecule, O3. One chlorine atom can repeat this destructive cycle thousands of times. They are huge holes in the ozone layer above both poles. They are not literal holes but just an area where the amount of ozone the holes affect Antarctica, Australia, Canada and Northern Europe. The ozone hole has steadily grown in size up to 27 million square kilometers. The holes get wider in the winter and shrink in the summer. Can we stop the depletion of the ozone layer? Yes we can. All we have to do is reduce the production chlorofluorocarbons, CFCs, and nitrogen oxides. The ozone layer has slowly recovered as people, businesses, and governments work to control such pollution. Through an international agreement known as the Montreal Protocol on Substances that Deplete the Ozone Layer, governments have decided to eventually discontinue production of CFCs, halons, carbon tetrachloride, and methyl chloroform, except for a few special uses. And industry has developed more ozone friendly substitutes. All other things being equal, and with adherence to the international agreements, the ozone layer is expected to recover over the next 50 years or so.